Assalamu alaikum, my name is Salim Siddiqui, son of Shamshad Ali Siddiqui, and we said that we're continuing to talk about the story of Eid, the great celebration, and that Muslims all over the world have gathered together, like myself and my family, and have gotten together in our, on our own cities, even here in Houston, Texas, to pray to the Lord, bow and worship to the Lord, all facing towards Mecca, the holy house that Abraham and Ishmael built, which Abraham was the pillar of faith, the one who prayed for his offspring to be of noble lineage and maintain the truth of the light. And Abraham is the one who made the challenge on the earth that my Lord is the one who gives life and takes life. And we've said that the term Allah is the Lord Most High and that we're explaining the meaning of this concept of the great Eid and that Muslims have gathered all over the earth to go to the house in Mecca and circumnambulate in a counterclockwise fashion around the house of God. And we said that Muslims are those who are submitting themselves to the truth of the light. And Islam means to submit yourself to the truth of the light. And we said that you are hearing the story in a way that you have never heard before. And that it is going to answer the questions that you have had about every issue, including your very own soul. But we've gotten to the point in the story where we've described the fundamentals and the fundamental that we must always remind ourselves is La ilaha illallah, that there is only one God. And sometimes that idea of Allah gets misunderstood. So if you don't understand the term Allah, go back to the beginning of this story. And we said we've got to the point in the chain of the fundamentals where God, the Most High, who created the universe and all that is in it and every living thing is created by God. For God is the only one who gives life and takes life. We've been through a lot of strange parts in the tale, but we've maintained that as the sons of Adam, Adam was told, and we remember that the human race is the most noble race of all of the other races or jinns or interdimensional beings. And if you don't understand what I mean, go back and listen to the story. And we said that the chain and stories must be there so that the people can see the truth and each prophet should come and that eventually there's going to be a final prophet. That the prophet Muhammad came bearing the truth of the light in the word in the way that it is spoken and recited and known. And that we are telling you the tale of this story that Allah has planned from the beginning of time and Allah is the planner of all things. Because we said that fundamental that Allah is the planner of all things must be true. So if it is that case, then I can arrogantly say that God planned for me to speak. Because if I'm speaking, God must be the planner. Now it's not arrogance that I'm able to speak, right? I'm saying it's not because any greatness on me that I can speak, but that is the will of the Lord. As long as I continue to speak the truth, the Lord will allow me to do so. And so I said, because I am telling you this story, it gets to the point where I have to explain how I'm able to tell you this story, because those who tell you the story of the truth of the light must be able to show you clearly why they're able to tell you the story, and it should be obvious reasons. And this is the way all the stories are always told. That my father was a Muslim born and raised in India in a pagan society, but believing in the light, not like a lot of the pagan rituals. And he married my mother who was born a Christian. Her name was Janice Clappinson, is Janice Clappinson. <laughs> and she accepted Islam upon hearing the truth. They were blessed with a, a, a young girl my sister, my older sister, and then I was born from my parents. And I said, we got to the point in the story where I had been at a lowest point of the low, and anybody who reveals the truth of the story always tells you that it is at the lowest point in their life where God grants them a gift, right? We said that I was here in the United States, and I had gotten to the point of being such a degenerate, young in my age, and thinking that I understood things that I didn't understand, and got to the point where I thought I could just commit crimes. And obviously, that could never be true. And so I ended up going to jail, and in this situation where you feel the most disgusting is like when you're in jail or on probation, and you gotta go to the uh, probation meeting and talk to the guy and explain to him that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you, and then they, they actually have to ask you to urinate in a cup, and. 
I'm telling you and admitting the worst of the stories that no one has ever heard, even in my own Muslim community where I speak of as a leader. None of them know that I've been in jail. <laughs> no one tells their secret uh, shameful sins unless they're actually revealing the truth of the light on a monumentous moment on the earth. I am swearing by God that it is this moment that the truth of the light is being told for the first time in the English language. And so at that lowest point of my life, I was still thinking that God, I wanted him to show me something. I wanted to learn, but I, you know, I was not in a position to understand. But at this point, God blessed me by allowing me to go to the holy city Mecca. And so even though I didn't understand it at the time, I got the opportunity to stay there for a great many years. Now, if we've been listening to the story for a long time, then you should understand that the chance to go and study with the scholars in the mother of cities, the great city where the house of the Lord is built in this tale that we told of Abraham is actually a noble sign for myself and my family, but I didn't see that sign. I just thought I was a, you know, one lucky guy. Wow, I got to go to the holy city. But to show you how strange it is, after I left Egypt, I went to the Arabian Peninsula to visit the holy house and just go look. It was at that time I thought I'd like to stay here a while and get to know stuff. And so it is always the sign that the person who tells you the story of the truth must admit how actually ignorant they are. I was in Saudi Arabia, I must have been in my early 20s at the time, and I wanted to get into one of the universities, either in Mecca or Medina, and I went to both of them to try and apply. And when I went to the university in Medina, when the interviewer was talking to me, in my humble Arabic I was trying to communicate, but he asked me a simple question to a Muslim. He asked me, what are the fundamentals of faith? Now if you listen to this story from the beginning to the end, then you should be able to say just like me. The fundamentals of faith is, there's only one God, God created the angels and jinns, God created the prophets, he gave them books, we're gonna die, <laughs> there's heaven and hell, <laughs> and there's the day of judgment, and all of this is the plan of God. You pretty much know the fundamentals because I've told you them from the beginning to the end. So when he asked me what are the fundamentals of faith, I didn't have a clue. Fundamentals of faith? What are you talking about fundamentals of faith? I'm Muslim, <laughs> I said, I'm Muslim. All I know is that my dad told me I'm Muslim, <laughs> right? What was I supposed to know? I grew up over here, I didn't know hardly anything. I, I, I'm Muslim, I think. <laughs> so he said, no, tell me the fundamentals of faith. I said, we pray, right? <laughs> and we fast sometimes. <laughs> I know there's the Hajj thing. <laughs> and if you got some money, you got to give some of it sometimes. He's like, you don't even know the fundamentals of the faith? I go, what are you talking about fundamentals? So just a quick example of the story of how ignorant I was. And so I'm showing this example to admit two terrible examples of being a criminal in my history, <laughs> as Joseph was put in jail for a time, <laughs> my, my, my great brother Joseph, and, and not knowing even the basic fundamentals of the, of the truth of the light. <laughs> Any person who tells a nation the truth of the light for the first time in their language, they must admit that they didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> and so, as is important, I must say, as a person who is a son of Adam, I was blessed to get married and bring my wife with me to the holy city of Mecca, which was a noble thing and a good sign for my wife. And in the final year of three years, now you got to understand, like I said, I've been in a terrible state in the United States. I'd grown up in America understanding freedom and communication and being able to talk and that we had an open Western society and, and we had a good standard of living and, and the third world seemed so alien and different while still thinking, being a Muslim, that what they had over there was is supposed to be superior and then you go over there and you see the different situation and you're confused and you're not sure how to understand the story because it's all about politics and east versus west and different groups and sections and so sometimes the story isn't made clear to you and so even though I was there like I said I'm a lazy guy I went to all my classes and listened and paid attention and and passed and took whatever time I needed to but 
I spent most of my time in the house of God in Mecca, just sitting there and watching the people go round and round. And people came from all over the world. They'd come to visit the holy house and they'd come for the annual pilgrimage. Of course, since I traveled there many times and had the opportunity to do Hajj and then lived there for three years, I've performed the annual Hajj many times. And so it's a sign to the West that someone who finally tells you the story of the Hajj uh, the story of the truth of the light must have done the Hajj at least once or many times as required, otherwise that person's story shouldn't be trusted. But as continuing proof, I've, I've lived in that city many times and watched the people come to the city and met so many people from all over the world and I kept looking at the people and not understanding what is really going on in the world. I mean, you can see there is something so beautiful at the Holy House in Mecca. And when I continue to get to the end of the story, you will know why you long to go there and why there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't and you can't. But to see the Holy House of God and watch the worshippers and believers in the light go round and round the house wearing only the white cloth, it's such a beautiful, amazing thing that it changes the light in your soul. But still I didn't understand. And I met so many people and I tried to understand what was really going on in the world. And even though it was a noble thing, after three years of learning there, the Lord Most High gave me a blessed sign. My wife bore a son and we had a baby born in the holy city of Mecca. And so a yearning started to occur for me that after the completion of this third year, I would go home and be with my family. Because once you have children, then you start to feel that connection to the family. And I wanted to come home and be with my parents. But I didn't know why exactly yet. But I knew that I wanted to be around my parents and I knew that I had traveled to a lot of places and that my dad had told me a lot of strange things and some of them made sense and some of them didn't make sense. But he had tried to tell me a lot of the stories. And I wanted my children to grow up around their grandparents as all sons of Adam. It is our nature for us to try and be connected to our family. And any bearer of the truth of the light is going to share with you this story of how you must know that you should be of all the sons of Adam, at least the most obvious sign that you should be connected to your own blood, that which you are descendants from. And it's an important concept to know in the way the story is told. And so to make a long story short, like I said, my name is Salim Siddiqui. I'm the son of a man named Shamshad Ali Siddiqui. In every storyteller, he tells the story. In every storyteller's life, there is the signs. For those who believe and don't believe, that is always up to you. But I promised you I was going to tell you a tale that is stranger than anything you've ever heard. And so whether you believe it or not, and whether you understand it or not, everything that I tell you must be verifiable. At this point, I decided in my life to come back to the United States. Came back here to Houston, and my mother and father were living here by the grace of God. And it is at this strength point something dramatic must happen. I'm still here in the United States and I've learned much of the language of the people and the word of the Lord. And I'm reading much, but I admit I have no clue what's really going on and don't understand the light whatsoever. <laughs> and I am a humble servant of Adam who admits my own flaws. My father at this point decides to go back to visit what is remaining of his family. Back in the East lands. So he takes a trip to where? India. But since my father is a bearer of the light, and oh, Shamshad Siddiqui, <laughs> I give to you glad tidings. As a bearer of the light to go all the way to India from here in the United States, this is rude, my father knows. He must stop in the house of the Lord. You can't fly around it. It's the house of the Lord. So he stops at the house of the Lord and performs 
the greeting to the house of the Lord. Not the Hajj, because it is not the season for Hajj, but he still performs a greeting to the great house. And any who pass by the great house must perform that greeting. And it is there in our rituals that we call Islam. And it is established on the earth for all time. But in this, there is a sign for my father. And then he goes to India, the most pagan and dark of all the lands. But being a Muslim, he wants to uh, meet his his family and unfortunately because of the age of my father at this time he gets ill right daddy you just got sick and he has a heart attack and so obviously me and my mother find out within the next few moments and the knowledge comes to us and we start figuring out what are we going to do and we start making arrangements for myself and my mother to fly to India and we go to India and we get my father after a few weeks of him a little bit recovering of his heart we bring him back here to the United States it is at this point in the story that my father passes away. His heart stops and he dies. And the hospital calls me back to the hospital and we come running. And by the time we get there, and I'm going to give you the story in brief, they have resuscitated him and they have put him on the machine and he is not conscious. But after some hours, he comes back too, but his heart is still not working. And to make a long story short, and it is very emotional and painful for those of us who know from my family, but see the glad tidings of the sign as I tell you the story, that the story that I have told cannot have any gaps. It must explain everything in the universe that I've said from the beginning of time to the very own storyteller. That it is at this point that even though we said that everything is connected to the story, that there is only one God. He is more powerful than any force or power on the earth. And that my father, I am swearing, is a bearer of the light. And it is at this point that God decides to show me and my family a sign that we did not understand. And of course, as any person who tells the story, they must tell you that all of this is verifiable. And since I have given you my father's name, Shamshat Ali Siddiqui, that anyone can tell you of all those who are alive and my father peace and blessings be upon him and Allah preserve him and grant him long life I bless I pray that he continues to live to hear my words because the story gets better daddy <laughs> it is at this point that we are told that my father needs to have a heart transplant. And to make a long story short, my father is granted a heart transplant. And so as we said, that the story is about Adam and the sons of Adam, and that God created angels and jinns and Adam telling us that there's going to be prophets in succession, all of us giving the word, and the word is going to be given to each prophet, and then the final prophet is going to be given the Quran, which is the word of law, God to be everlasting, and that the prophet Muhammad came with the word, knowing the truth, and so his statements are true. I am going to prove the truth of my story by the name of my father and the blessings of the Lord Most High. That my father was given the sign as the story always goes back as my father would tell me the story. Remember the story is always about Abraham. Because Abraham is the one who we said that Muslims are called themselves people who accept the truth of the one God. And that we call Islam. And Abraham was the one who said from this point on in the earth, I need it to be known forever. There's one God, no other God. That was Abraham's blessing, and Abraham challenged, my God is the only God that gives life and takes life. So as a sign to my father and to me that I would be given a blessed sign of be a being able to tell the story I'm telling you, my father was given a sign that he was made by the Lord, who is the only one who gives life and takes life. This was back in 2000 and my father was dead and then he got a heart transplant by the best blessings of the Lord and he continues to live. And anybody on the earth 
who knows him will bear witness. Ask any Muslim in, on the earth, in the United States of America or anywhere in the earth, who knows the name Shamshad Ali Siddiqui of my father, and they will bear witness that that man was a bearer of the light. There is no doubt of that. And it's important that that be known because I'm telling the story, right? And we said we have to show the fundamentals. And so my mother, we showed how she accepted the truth and was a bearer of the light. And so the same challenge I must be able to make as a person who tells the story that anyone who has ever known the name Aisha Siddiqa, the name my mother chose to go by as a Muslim woman believing in the light, that all of the Muslims in the world who didn't understand how this woman, who was a British lady, speaking with a British accent, could be a Muslim like she was, then all of them will tell you what I am humb humbly admitting to you, that my mother was a blessed noble woman bearing the light. And I'm telling you all of this only because I'm saying that my greatness is nothing, and I am not great, Allah is the greatest, but I got a special gift, and it's going to be made known to you. But I haven't explained why the story has come yet. And so I want to give a few more details because they said I really want to give you the story and if by God I'm going to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth, I might as well show you the package so that you truly understand. My father was saved, as I said, and lives to this day by the thanks of God. And me being back here in the West, my father wanted one thing again. I wish my son would go to law school and learn the law so he could do something in this land. Because my father still believed that the best thing he could do for his son as he prayed was for him to be able to speak the way of the people and talk to them about their own things. And perhaps he didn't understand the prayer that he made. And I know I didn't understand it at the time. And so my father kept wanting me to go to law school. And I, having studied Islam, thought, why would I want to study American knowledge? I've just been studying the knowledge of the, the light from the East, and I don't want to study worldly laws, and I was a little bit confused. But I began to change my mind, as it was the wish of my father, and I thought there might be a reason why I should study this, since I've spent so much time studying the way to communicate the language of Arabic and understanding the linguistics of that land, and the stories that that they have and the way things were set up, but I didn't understand the whole truth that I'm revealing to you now. Hmm. And so I come to this strange point where I was thinking in America, we have gotten to the point where things are so corrupt and the forces of darkness are enslaving mankind, and I looked at America as the enemy, right? I didn't understand the concepts that I'm telling you. And so as a young man, I thought America is not the enemy in the sense that I'm going to fight with them. No, I, I knew better than that. I knew better than that. I'm not a crazy jihadist, as you might say in today's terminology. I told you we want to stay above these concepts and let you understand that for once a Muslim who is able to communicate in your words, in your way, is telling you the story of the truth so that you may listen and proving it by the story so it is this point that I decided, okay, I will go ahead and go study the law. My father wants it, and he thinks it is the right thing for me to do. And I didn't think I wanted to practice law and still uh, know that that is not my destiny. <laughs> but I, being an immigrant, it's hard to get into law school, and everybody knows the situation. And if we're going to talk about the reality and tell you the truth real quickly, of course, I figured out a way to find something strange in the United States. There are these programs where sometimes the government sets up these systems where if you do these different studies or programs and volunteer work or methods, you can get into programs for minorities or people who are underprivileged and not and suppressed in society. A strange thing that we have in this country, still in an existence. So I got into a program that is called the Council on Legal 
education opportunity. Based on Thurgood Marshall, the Black Justice of the United States of the Constitution, and I'm telling you this part of the tale that I got into a special summer program to help you learn about the American laws and help you get into law school. And I applied to law schools all over the United States and ended up getting accepted and going to law school here in Houston, Texas. But I had been so misguided in the story and not knowing what to look for that I found myself thinking that the world was at a struggle between the East and the West as so many de people depict it. And we had gotten in a time where there's so much darkness and everything is about money and corruption and politics and how can we make sense of all of this confusion? And so I found myself sitting there in this program, which was strange, with a large group of African Americans who had gotten in on this scholarship program. Now, if I tell you the detailed stories of my life, then you will know that I have no problem with African American people, and I'm <laughs> always tight with the brothers <laughs> and the sisters, of course, because I understand the story that I've been telling you, and that is there is only one God, and all of us are the sons of Adam. And of course, they said, I'm going to talk a little bit about racism and the African-American issue. And so I've got to be able to reveal to you the story of the truth. And since I said I'm telling you the whole story of the truth, being able to talk about racism should be fairly simple in understanding the truth of the light. But I said there I found myself sitting in law school, surrounded by African-Americans. Now, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, amongst most white people, if... If you're one white person with a bunch of black people, you're supposed to be uncomfortable because that's how we're trained in the West. But I am a little bit different than most people in that I'm white <laughs> and my mother's British and I speak English without an accent. <laughs> my dad's brown and speaks with a totally different accent. So I'm always down with African-American people because you can go talk to an African-American person. doesn't matter where he's from, even if his name is... Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> and he's a black guy, and he starts to talk to you. When you tell them you're a white guy, and you start talking, and they look at you, but you say your name is Salim Siddiqui, then any black person goes, oh, okay. <laughs> you're not really a white dude. You're cool. <laughs> your name is Salim Siddiqui, <laughs> right? Even though his own name is Thomas Jefferson, but it's a, it's a story of truth, and I know it's comical, but since we're talking about race, the stereotypes are there, and we all misunderstand things. But before I go on in the story, I have to talk about this fundamental turning point in my life, and that is going to law school. We said that we must remain consistent in this tale, that the fundamental of the story is what? La ilaha illallah. There is only one God. And we said we call God in Arabic Allah, meaning the God, the one who created the universe, you, me, and all that is in it. The one who created every living thing in the universe. The one who created the angels out of light, who have no free will, and are obeying the Lord by their nature. They don't disobey the Lord. There are other races of smokeless fire of many kinds that we've gone through, and that God created Adam the greatest of all the races, and taught Adam the word. And that all of this is in the chain that God told Adam there was going to continue to be prophets, each in succession, and that we will live and we will die and our souls will be raised, and that there's punishment in hell and reward for the eternal souls of the everlasting for those who understood the plan of the Lord and recognized Allah, the one true God. And we said that God is not to be understood as any graven image or statue. That the way to understand the Lord is always to understand Him as the light. And so we remained consistent in our story that anyone who is searching for the truth must always be searching for the light. And so I've told you, if you're really listening to the story and paying attention and trying to find the light, you shouldn't be deceived by the dark parts of the story that are even magical and powerful and supernatural in nature. But you should still be trying to search for the light. And we said we always must remember that in every part of the story, this is a war between the light and the dark. 
not even between the sons of Adam, not even between our race and the other races, but between them who are dark and us who are dark. And there is a war that is everlasting between the light and the dark, not the misconception that you are told about Islam or Muslims at this very day. Let me just take a little break.